So we want to welcome everyone for joining us for this um, activity celebrating the Hispanic Latinx uh, month here at Bristol Community College. We have a couple of activities, but we want to make sure we highlighted the women because women in the Hispanic culture are very important, very central, a lot of influence. So we wanted to bring a couple of entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs, Latinas, so that they can share their success stories. So I want to start by uh, giving a big thanks to Eva Brito for um, helping us with this activity. And she directs the Women's Center here at Bristol and she wants to say a couple of words. Thank you, thank you for having me. Very excited to be here for a circle of success. The more stories of um, success and value in celebrating the beautiful women that we are, the better. So very happy to be here. I do want to take this opportunity to share a little bit about the Women's Center and tell you that we do have some pamphlets in the back that share the Women's Center. We're located in the E building, E104. We're open Monday through Friday, 9 o'clock to 4.30. And the Women's Center is a space that women can feel safe, they can feel connected, and to feel supported. We do a lot of different things there, but that's the most important thing, is to provide advocacy and empowerment and really have authentic conversations, sometimes on the heavier end about the inequities that exist for women, and also sometimes on the fun end about enjoyment, like our Lunch and Learn series and so forth. So um, the Women's Center is there for you, regardless if you're a student, faculty, or community member. And speaking of the Women's Center events, uh, this Latina, Ingrid Centrenium, she's going to be speaking at the Women's Center on November 12th. It's the day after Veterans Day, and that's intentional because she's a veteran. She retired from the U.S. military. She was a female um, pilot. So she's going to speak to her experience for our series, Stories That Inspire, at 11 o'clock on November 12th at the Women's Center. And that's more of an intimate feel kind of thing. At the same day, that's at 11 at 9 o'clock in the morning, she's going to speak in the H Building Auditorium. Uh, that is a collaboration between the Women's Center, the Veterans Center, and Trio Services. So she's going to speak on a broader context of um, her experience as a Latina in the military, a very male-dominated feel, as we know. And tomorrow, because it is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, we're going to have Isaura. She is a Humphrey Fellow. She's here from Mozambique, Africa. So she's going to talk about her experiences with gender um, violence and inequality from her perspective in Africa. So two great things. Um, and before you leave, I would like for everyone to sign in. And we have a survey. But aside of that, very happy to be here in support as a co-sponsor of this event. Thank you, Eva. Um, so we want to start, and the first thing that I want to do is have our um, guests introduce themselves. Tell, tell us your name, where are you from, what's your business. So if, if you want to start. Um, my name is Sui Koto. Uh, my business is Precious Nails by SM. Uh, I live in Far River. I'm from Puerto Rico. And... <laughs> I, that's what I do, nails. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for the opportunity of being here. And it makes me really happy to see events like this and uh, women supporting women and networking and learning from each other. So thank you again. My name is Sony Fernandez. I am Brazilian. I came here to the United States 28 years ago. I didn't know anybody, so I put myself to college. I went to UMass Dartmouth, acquired my uh, nursing degree, bachelor's nursing degree, and uh, always planning for the future. Uh, I'm like a type A personality kind of thing, but I also like to network and care about other people. Uh, I can't get away from becoming not just a nurse in a hospital, but I want to nurse everybody in the community too. So four years ago, I have had a chance to only find amazing people in my journey. Um, I met uh, Carla Otoni, I met a lot of nice people in the community, and it helped me inspire, inspire myself on reaching the community. Also, I have amazing supporting husband, and with him, we started different business. 
Um, we have a networking business uh, that is called uh, Business Innovation Center. We bought a building in Columbia Street and we have groups that network with each other. We have tech networking. Uh, it's a referral type of business. And slowly we noticed that we're not an island. We have to get people motivated and inspired to help each other. And by having that, uh, we started uh, educational programs and we have uh, offices. We have um, Toastmasters International. We open uh, Toastmasters International. And uh, Amy was able to, it was actually, we're glad that Amy participated there for a while. It's nice to see her doing so much in the community too. So thank you, Amy. Um, we have also a, um, a TV studio and a recording studio. We're trying to inspire little kids with the STEM program. We have, um, robotics for kids and also we started we noticed that people were going there and then didn't have any place to go eat other than Dunkin Donuts or so that's why we started a coffee shop my son uh, started with his uh, friends uh, lemonade day and he designed the, the little logo and everything and we got the other kids to paint the logo and so we're just trying to inspire and give back to the community but so thirsty joe's is the name of the business thank you thank you do we clap Um, so once again, the very least, thank you for having me. My name is Angelica, and my business name is The Globe by Angie. Um, right now, I'm actually working on the rebranding. It's called Pyra. Um, most than anything, because I feel like the name um, needs to inspire more. Um, it's clean beauty cosmetics. It's plant-based and organic as well. So if you guys want to take a peek, we have the table um, on the outside. Um, the products are cruelty-free, and they're certified by PETA. Um, and I'm just very excited to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I'm actually from Colombia. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Melina Pagan, and I'm from Puerto Rico. Um, I live in Providence, where I own um, a bagel shop named Rebel Artisan Bagels, and I'm in the process of opening a second business named Little Sister, um, which will be an all-day cafe and bakery also in Providence. Um, I grew up in Puerto Rico uh, until I was 17, and then I came to Boston for college at MIT. So I'm not trained as a baker. It's something that I came into as a second career, but I think I've really hit my stride, and it fills me with so much joy to run my business every day. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so this is meant to be a conversation. So if at any point you have a question or a follow-up comment, Please let us know, I'll give you the microphone because we're recording. But I have um, a question for all of you. What inspired you to create your business or go into, um, into the, um, your business adventure? In your case, it's not really, a, it's a business, but it's more than that, right? Because it's like a nonprofit. When I think of nonprofits, I don't think it as business. So that's the first question, whoever wants to take it. Um, so it's always, I feel like it's, um, it's a complicated question because I feel like entrepreneurs in general, everyone's just inspired by different things. Um, I'm Colombian originally. I came here when I was around 9, 10, but then once I graduated from high school, I went back to my country um, in Colombia. Um, I am originally from Barranquilla and it was just hard assimilating. I was going to school for broadcast and journalism. Um, I went back, didn't like it, went to Bogota, and then I just kind of started looking for a job. Um, long story short, I ended up working selling emeralds and gold inside a mine, which was pretty cool. It's called um, La Catedral de Salins y Paquira. Has anyone ever been? Heard? It's actually the first wonder in, in Colombia. It's a, it's a salt mine. It's pretty cool. So I was just really inspired by like all this natural, like, 
like I was inside of mine for like two years. So it was pretty awesome. So when I came back to the United States, it just, you know, it just went away, the whole entrepreneurship thing. But then once I, for some reason, I was kind of depressed and I kind of just started like making my own products and like researching and creating them. And then all the products were named after like all these gemstones. Like I didn't even realize it, but then everything just started just making sense and the products are inspired by natural essences and um, the organic names for like pirate and like gemstones. Um, so it's just finding your inner radiance. And that's why I'm rebranding instead of just the glow up, it didn't really connect. But pirate, it's more of pirate stones and gemstones and what I want people to kind of be more inspired by, just finding their own selves. Um, what inspired us to, my husband and I, to uh, have the coffee shop, Thursday Joe's, it was first seeing that the kids were doing lemonade and they were asking, why can't we start a business to sell lemonade? So that's what, where we got the inspiration. And the coffee shop is also an extension to what we are already doing there the, at the Business Innovation Center. So it's nice to have a, a coffee shop where you can just um, be open to the public and it's not just a coffee shop, it's connecting to the people. We have a, vet, a veteran uh, gentleman that goes every morning there and he sits, he buys a cup of coffee and he leaves after he talks to my husband and tells about his kids, about his days. He leaves and sometimes he doesn't even finish his cup of coffee. It's just that connection, you know, having somebody that cares and listens to you. So it's not just about the money. So <laughs> thank you. Um, I started doing nails because um, it was kind of hard for me. I had two little, two little kids. I couldn't go to uh, to a regular job because I didn't have the help to raise them. So I, and I used to love getting my nails done. <laughs> and I say, well, there's a lot of girls that love getting their nails done, so I'm gonna start learning. And that's how I started. One day I told my mom, hey, I'm gonna, I wanna start doing nails. So I went in the internet, I bought everything, and my first client was my brother. <laughs> Yes, I, I made him give, him give me his finger so I could learn, practice, and that's how I started. And I started um, doing nails in, in, my, in my dining room, in my house. I waited until my, uh, my two little kids were um, going to school, and then I decided I was going to open a small nail salon. I decided to open a small nail salon because um, when I used to get my nails done, I felt a little bit... Um, uh, intimidated by going to a bigger place and talking to the to the pers the owners or the nail tech to whatever I wanted to get done. And I say, I'm gonna start a, a small one so when people come, when the girls come, they feel like they're going to my house. And that's why I have a, a small nail salon and that's exactly how it is. They go in, they feel like they at my house. We have a great connection. I, I talk to them about everything. They talk to me about everything and I just love it that way. I like your story. <laughs> um, I decided to open my own business um, because I didn't like my old job and I was having a really hard time um, fitting into the company culture. I used to work for CVS Caremark or CVS Health now. So it's a pretty big company. I had a desk job. Um, it wasn't really fulfilling and I didn't want um, to look back in 20 years and feel like I had kind of wasted my career or not fulfilled my potential. So I quit um, the day before my 27th birthday, which was also the day before um, the last major election. And I decided to just kind of figure it out on my own. Um, it took me six months to test out the business concept and then finally open my storefront. And the biggest um, goal for me in, in trying to start my own business is to 
create a positive work environment and redefine the relationship between employees and their employer because that was the thing that was making me most unhappy um, in my old job and especially in the food and service industry. Um, that difference between the employer and the employee is very marked. Um, people aren't used to feeling like valued employees when they're paid by the hour and not really given benefits. So we've focused on um, paying above average wages, creating retirement programs for employees, and trying to provide many more opportunities so that they feel like they can build a career in the field. So what do you like the most about your job and what has been the biggest challenge so far? Well, I have an e-commerce store, um, so I really love the creative aspect of it, like knowing what's trending or like how can I make the website prettier and stuff like that. Like that's the part that I'm always obsessed with the most. The hard part is keeping up with, at the same time, with whatever's trending more in the SEO and why it's Google ranking less and what's going on and the algorithm. So like the hard part is just staying and keeping up with social media. Um, because it's like a never ending quest. There's something new, there's TikTok, there's this, Instagram's going down, now LinkedIn's up. So it's just like knowing where the target market is. Uh, for me, it's not like it's a job. I oversee the business basically. So, uh, and the secret of our business is to have somebody that you can count on because when you're open to the public, you have to have somebody there uh, in the front line and uh, finding somebody that is able to be accountable is the hardest part of being uh, having a, a, a coffee shop or anything that's open to the public because a business you you it's nice to have a business but you have to have a business that you don't need to physically be there every day it doesn't depend on you solo. Otherwise, it's not going to thrive. And uh, in my business, as long as we have uh, the whole team, and uh, that's what matters. Um, and that's what I like the most, to be able to uh, count on other people in order for us to exist. And I have the perk of being able to have a full-time job as a nurse in the VA and you know have that security blanket also. Because if the business doesn't thrive that month, I have money to pay my bills and so forth. So, and also give my partner the security of uh, healthcare insurance that is also another thing that every business owners spend a lot of money into it also. It's, it's sometimes it's a setback. You have great ideas, but if you don't have the financial background, you are in trouble. You can't get in trouble. So that's the perk that I have and what I like the most. Plus the community outreach. And that's where I really have fun doing things and motivating people and uh, holding events. We're going to have an event uh, because of um, as a Brazilian, I have the chance to uh, get involved with, uh, and people contact us. We have two medical students there from university, uh, from Brown University, that are coming to help give lectures to Brazilian community. So December seventh, we are. It's going to be a community event, not a religious event but it's going to be held in the Revival Church in Fall River. That is the first event, but it's going to have a lot more events. So hopefully I'm going to get BCC to uh, maybe have an event with all the communities, not just Brazilians. So I'll, I'll talk to you more in the future, hopefully. Thank you. Well, what I love most about my job is uh, being able to create, to, to um, 
design my ideas on su such a small place where it's uh, the nails. Um, being able to talk to different women, uh, listening to all the stories, all their how they day how they um, their day went. Um, that's one of my favorite parts. The um, what makes me love my job, being able to be there uh, for other women that come in and I can talk to them and also create, like I said, I love it. And uh, like Angelica said, the difficult part is uh, keeping up with the trends, um, what's new, what's not new. Uh, but overall, I love it. It don't matter if it gets difficult, if, if not, I love my job. Um, for me, the part that I love the most is actually two things. <laughs> so I really, really enjoy um, dealing with the customers in general. Our customer base is really friendly. They're just totally chill people, and I've met a lot of new friends through the business, which I wasn't really expecting. Um, and I also really enjoy problem solving. Running a business gives you a lot of problems to solve in a lot of different arenas, right? There's marketing problems, there's technical problems, there's product problems, there's all kinds. Um, and in general, I'm someone who's very energized by a challenge, which I have realized is, is not super common. Um, things that I don't like are mostly dealing with the city. Uh, the city government in Providence isn't super friendly to business. I don't know how it's like in Fall River. But anytime I get a letter from the city government or, you know, I have the city council person, I'm like, oh, trouble's my, coming my way. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. What educational preparation would you recommend for someone who wants to advance doing the type of work that you do? And anything in your particular educational background that helped you um, with what you're doing right now? A lot of you are doing something totally different from what you study, so anything there that you think has helped you? I'm gonna. Um, I, so I did my, um, college education as a chemical engineer, and I never used it um, after I graduated until now. Um, running a commercial bakery is actually a lot like chemical engineering. Um, so it's been very useful for me, but that's very specific to my field. I think that for any entrepreneur, the um, best uh, value that you'll get for your time is learning about the financials. Um, a lot of people don't know how to read their profit and loss statement. They don't know how to talk to an accountant. And it's very important that you get um, well-versed in the language because that's going to then drive your business strategy and your marketing and so forth. Like, um, also, marketing, as you said, um, very, very important because for me, like running the business efficiently on the cost side comes naturally, but it's bringing people in and drawing people to what you do that's very challenging. You have to figure out what it is about what you do that's so special and is going to connect with other people. Oh, I'm like. Sure. <laughs> um, well, I had a background with. Um, so, um, sorry, social media, I was going to say, I take a lot of courses for social media, um, but in general, the um, journalism aspect is the fact that we're always storytelling. So even if I'm creating a product or a palette or it's makeup, it's still a story that you have to tell. Bakery, same, like any business, there's always like a part that you have to create like that connection with. Um, but I will say that anyone that wants to have a business or it's looking just to get started, um, it's a lot of marketing, social media, especially now. Um, I just feel like everything just goes back to it. Like, even if you don't like it, you kind of have to. <laughs> I totally agree with the two of you. If you don't have the background of uh, the, the willingness to learn, um, in my case, I had no idea that I would be talking to uh, city officials you know, uh, doing food safety classes. Um, anything that relates to the public, it's open to the public. If you're not a people's person, you better not be in that business. 
Um, and, and it is not easy. So we started, we brought, uh, we sponsor Toastmasters International. That has helped me a lot. Be able to get the butterfly of, out of your stomach and think what you're going to say and how your message can be most effective to the public or to somebody and to the, 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 the many situations that you're going to be placing yourself into. Uh, also, having a great accountant is a must for any job, any, any business, and that's what we have. We have a great accountant. We have uh, our guy that does the tax because you don't mess around with the iron. Iron, IRS, and overall, you never stop learning. Mm -hmm. Connect, ask questions, be open, and receptive to diversity. Thank you. Um, if a person want to start do, uh, working in what I uh, doing, what I do, my the best thing they can do is uh, go to every single workshop they can, never stop um, wanting to learn. Because in this business, this industry, you never stop learning. You learn something today, tomorrow something new. So uh, my advice is never stop learning, never, never, never quit. Just keep on going and learning. That's my advice. <laughs> so I have a question regarding, in terms of um, doing what you're doing, if you have somebody that serves as a mentor or if not as an inspiration, but also if, how did you, got, how did you get the money to start your business? Because you know, you gotta pay rent, you gotta start with your uh, materials, same thing, how do you, how do you go about that? Or, what was your story like in terms of that? So, to um, so with regards to mentorship, um, I don't have many mentors um, within my field. Um, what I try to do is just seek out people who are really good at what they do. Um, so I have a bench of what I call the professionals. So I love my accountant. I agree with you, Sony, that having a good accountant is gold. Um, I also have my landlord who's um, a real estate developer. So he gives me a lot of guidance if I'm looking for second locations. Um, I also have some friends who are chefs and they are always willing to look at my work and critique it. So it's just making friends. Um, they don't necessarily have to be you know, more advanced than you. Um, they just need to be people who you click with and, you know, they can give you feedback on what you're doing. Um, with regards to money, I, I was very fortunate to have a well-paying job um, when I decided to become an entrepreneur. So I always made, you know, I always made the most of that salary, saved a lot of money, and I knew that one day, um, I was going to want that money to buy myself some freedom. So that's how I always looked at it. Um, I do know from other friends that securing financing is very hard. You can bootstrap a business up to a certain point and then it needs a bigger cash infusion and you know you either get the money and can take the leap or a lot of businesses just kind of wither off and die because they can never get the funding. Um, when I first started, I did a Kickstarter campaign as part of my um, initial budget. Do you guys know what Kickstarter is? So I did a Kickstarter campaign and I raised $27,000. And it was brilliant marketing. Um, and the money was very, very useful as a cushion. So I always um, recommend to people who have a compelling product and have really solid storytelling skills to pursue that path. Um, because then when you start your business, you have a built-in clientele of people who are really invested literally in what you're doing. Um, for the moment being, everything has been self-funded. I have done a few of like, um, similar to yours, um, one of them was called I Fund Women, but it wasn't too successful. Um, and I'm also right now doing a beauty backer campaign um, to raise funds for a second product that I'm working on. Um, but it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Um, for mentorship, I actually reached out through um, social media to other skincare founders 
um, and just people that share like similar values, like people that really like organic products. Um, not necessarily, sometimes it's people that are in the same industry, um, but it's people that share like similar like likes or like products. Um, I have a really good friend of mine, Gilly's Organics, um, and her products are like skincare. Um, so it's always good because it's like in the same area, but it's different, and then she's already like few steps, and she's like, yes, you can do it. So I would say that for other people, mentorship, it's really essential because it's people that have already like been there, done that, so it helps. For us, um, we have a property, a CSA property management, and I have a property that was a uh, multifamily that was not working so well, so we decided to get rid of it. And then we utilized the money to buy this property uh, in Columbia Street, which is a six apartment and the, the, the business. Um, we also, you would be uh, amazed of how many grants are out there. Uh, you just gotta find somebody that's a good grant writer. And we were able to get actually eighty-nine thousand dollars to remodel the business, the, the 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 business. I mean, the building. And it's like, yeah, sure, twist my arm, you know. Um, we just got another grant to implement um, help STEM program with uh, doing robotics for kids um, in collaboration with the YMCA. So we did that last year. Uh, where the kids came and drew, and designed their own uh, robot, and then they tested at the YMCA under under the water. It was pretty cool. Uh, also, we got this year uh, another program. We got another grant, um, not too bad, but twenty five thousand to have a virtual reality program, which is uh, towards uh, seventeen to twenty six year old kids that are going to, it's, it's actually the grant is from New Bedford. Unfortunately, it's not for Fall River, but we are still looking for kids that want to be paid to learn. So the kids are going to participate in this. There is like uh, 12 openings still. Um, you do, I would love to get kids involved. I'll give you the, the website. Um, we have a whole team that is doing the recruitment but the grant is already secured, the place is already secured. It's going to be a virtual reality kind of setting. And so instead of them playing games in the computer or games that are not as healthy, they will be in virtual reality and learning uh, skills and techniques, uh, whether it be uh, programming or any, anything that is of their interest that will give them a skill. And they're gonna be getting paid like $75. It depends on how many kids. So, thank you. I don't know why I keep trying to give it to you. For me, I made, I made everything by working at my house. That's how I was able to go to uh, Neo Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when I finished, I was about a year. I worked in my house. And that's, what, that's how I was able to open my business. And uh, a few credit cards. Credit cards really work. And that's how I, I could open my business. But that was it for me. Anyone that ins like really inspire you or mentorship through the whole process? Or not really, it's just you and your friends supporting you? My family, they were the biggest support they, from them, I got inspired. Um, my mom is, has always been such a, a hardworking woman, and also my dad, and also my colleagues. Mm -hmm. I, I used to see how they work, and they still are my inspiration. Um, uh, colleagues that have been in the business for maybe uh, 20, 25 years doing nails, and they do amazing, beautiful, beautiful art. So that's what inspired me. And it keeps on inspiring me. So I don't know if anyone had any questions or comments, something we haven't addressed. I'm curious to know how many years ago did you start your business? 
I would like to know how many years have you been in your respective fields? Well, with my salon, I have I already have it for five years, and I've been doing nails for approximately eight years. Mm -hmm. uh, Business Innovation Center started five years ago, uh, and uh, Thirsty Joe's Coffee Shop we started last year. Um, so it's uh, almost uh, yeah one year and two months. So that's that's that. <laughs> um, three years. Wow. Same for me, three years. In November, it'll be three years. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed because I've seen the platforms on, uh, online, and they look like very solid. Rosario has a question. Oh, I just, I don't need these. Okay. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hello, and thank you for um, telling your stories because they're really inspiring. Um, I was going to ask you if you feel like being Hispanic has made a difference in your work in any way? It could be positive or it could be negative. Thank you for that clarification. <laughs> <laughs> it has actually. Um, I do feel that even on social media, I have two separate accounts and I sometimes feel like whenever I try to connect with other women or like other um, businesses in general that are in the beauty industry and stuff like that, it's more about like, oh, first of all, I have to explain that I'm Latina and like all that. And then it's about the actual benefits of the products and stuff like that. Or sometimes it's more like um, just getting support from other Latinas, like you would think, but my biggest supporters are actually Caucasian women um, and African American. It's not so much Latinas. Um, fortunately, yes, um, it can be a plus and it can also be a curse. Uh, the, the exotic uh, looks and the, the accent can get in the way, but you know what? You have to embrace that you're unique and there is no other human being like yourself. Yes, I'm proud of being Brazilian and I will never forget my roots. It also you can utilize and you can spin in the way that it depends on how you hold yourself. You know, it can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing, but make it always as a good thing. Because those that don't think it's a good thing, they don't deserve to be around you. And obviously they're not gonna be someone that's gonna lift you up. You gotta surround yourself with positive people. If that's what I take, you know. Yes, I do have the accent, but you know what? That makes me unique. And it can also be a, a, a starting point for conversation because your own accent is like, they already come to you and then, where are you from? <laughs> um, let me think, Venus? No, 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 I'm from Brazil. So that's <laughs> Um, being a Latina in my business has helped me establish a diversity of clients uh, different, from different places. I, have, uh, I speak both, la both languages, so I have, it's, it's, it's been good because I have um, my Latinos. It don't matter from where, but I have them. They come to me, they feel secure, they feel happy that they can go to me and explain what they want. Um, and uh, it has also been a little bit challenging when um, I have to go to like the city or um, to the uh, cosmetology board and sometimes it's a little bit hard to uh, be able to communicate because I don't know if it's me, but sometimes you go, they see you, you are Hispanic and they don't treat you the same or, you know, and you have to prove to them, hey, I'm Hispanic, but um, I'm here because I'm, I'm equal. I'm, I'm, the, I'm as the same as a, a person and I'm a, a person that's born here or whatever. I'm worth it. And that's, that's, a, that's the, the little challenging part, but it's all like she said. So it's 
showing them that you are worth it, that you're different, but, you, but you're here to, to create. Um, for me, um, on the plus side, I think people find it intriguing that I'm a Puerto Rican bagel maker. You don't really hear about that. <laughs> so a lot of people will see me and they think I'm Jewish. And um, of course, I want to be honest and just say, actually, I'm not. I'm Puerto Rican. And they're like, oh, that's interesting. Tell me more. Um, and I found interesting ways to um, expose more people, especially in my area. It's pretty much just white people and I can expose them to Puerto Rican culture, which is part of what I'm doing with my second concept I'm building. We're bringing in a lot of um, Puerto Rican pastries, and people already know us for being really good bakers, so they come in with a really open mind, and they're excited to try things, and um, people are very curious about the culture. So I think that's definitely a positive. On the minus side, um, I find myself a lot of times having to prove that I'm a woman of color. Um, which is uh, very challenging because I just don't look like what people expect a person of color to look like. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, like if I blow out my hair, it's highlighted and I show up like, you know, looking fresh and fly. Um, and I don't have much of an accent, you have to be listening for it. So then people think I'm white and then, you know, I kind of challenge that expectation and, and they're like, I don't believe you. <laughs> so like having to navigate that constantly is is very, very challenging and trying to strike the balance of like, you know, when to show off my culture and when it's like more advantageous not to, which I hate that that's even a thing. Um, like that's very, very challenging for me. So you were all invited because we consider you a successful Latina entrepreneurs. So um, when do you consider that a person in your field has achieved success? And, and when did you f feel that you were successful? If, if you already felt that at some point and you're like, wow, I made it, this is good. Um, I don't know, I just feel like it's, it's a tough question, to be honest with you. I did feel really, I wouldn't say successful, I would say happy. Um, a year ago when I got the product certified by PETA. Like I can actually, I don't know if you guys, when you guys go shopping, Sephora, you guys see the little bunny sign on the, on the products? So it made me feel like, oh my God, like the products are, you know, like people are gonna feel like, you know, they're certified, they're organic. Um, but to be honest with you, I feel like that's not even close to what success should feel like. Um, and I'm still working on it. Hopefully I feel successful um, when more things start happening. Like my definition of success would be um, just seeing my phone and just right now as we speak, online orders shining through. <laughs> so that's my definition of success. Uh, success, achieving success is very subjective. So the way I, we approach is small victories. You make a goal, like any program that you design, any uh, for our coffee, any promotion that we make, a hundred pizza topping, and uh, we have the home delivery. Uh, we also can have, uh, we can hold birthday parties. We also can have uh, a catering. And just by having little goals and having that being a success is our feeling of success. You know, celebrating small victor victories, not just, and as a whole, um, I already consider myself lucky and humble because coming from a farm and coming to a whole new world not knowing anybody and being not only financially secure, but I can retire tomorrow if I want to, is in my view being successful. And not only that, having the ability to make a change and then be a mentor and being a coach for somebody else, that is in my eyes uh, considering myself successful. 
So cele I celebrate small victories every day. For me, is um, you're successful when you when when you see that you do you you what are you doing? You're doing it with love. You're not doing it because of the money or what you can get. It's because you love it. And for me, that has been a success because I love going to work every day. I can be I am there almost 12 hours a day, and I love it. And also when people, when people come to you because of who you are and what you do, that's, for me, that's success. Also, um, when I, after I was three years, when I started my business, they say, oh, from the first to the third year, that's when they, you know if your business is going to keep on growing or you're going to go down. And when I, now that I, um, I just turned five years in June, 24th, I said, I felt successful. I say, wow, I passed the, the three years. So now I can whoo, breathe a little bit. But from the first to the third year, yes, I was a little bit nervous. And I still am. Who, who isn't? But I can, I can say I feel successful in that part. I still want to keep on growing and going. But in that part, I feel successful. I love what you said about um, success feeling to you, like people like what you do and they come to you for what you do, because I was struggling to, <laughs> to like define success so, so uh, snappily. Um, I think for me as a business owner, I, my primary concerns are very practical, so um, like success is making sure that the business can sustain itself financially. Um, I. I see myself having a lot of responsibility over the lives of, of my team members, and it's very important for me that the business can continue to provide for them in a stable way and that they feel like they have job security. Um, and on a personal level, you couldn't have put it better. Just like having, knowing that I have like this secret sauce that nobody can replicate, and that's what makes me feel special because of what I've done and what I've experienced. Okay, so I kind of have um, a two-part question. Um, before we get into that, I just want to say, Sony, I felt kind of compelled to count your ands and ums. <laughs> Should know what I'm talking about with that. Uh, and, and Joanne, I'm sure, too. Uh, so my question is, do you belong to any nonprofits or organizations who work on helping women or Latino women especially? Um, and the second part to this is, do you feel like the things that are put in place for your respective areas, as far as like Chamber of Commerce, things of that nature, your elected officials, do you feel like they're representing you? Do, you, do, do they come to you? Do they ask you for help, like, for help within the community? Do they want to help you and support you? Do you feel that they represent you? I'd be happy to start. Um, I don't belong to any nonprofits that help women. However, um, back in Providence, I've hosted two events that we called Bitchin, and it was a group of um, female entrepreneurs who are all around the same age, so we're all millennials. Um, and we opened this up to the public to come in and, and do a panel like this one, um, where we talked about how we started our businesses and what are the challenges, and we opened ourselves up to um, to mentor them if they wanted to. So a lot of them have stayed in touch with us after that. Um, with regards to the city government, I, like, unfortunately, like, I don't recall any times when they have offered themselves up as a resource. Um, and when they come up, they usually kind of get in the way. So I avoid them. But I can't speak for the local government here. Uh, in our situation, it has been different experience. We belong to the Chamber of Commerce, Fall River Chamber of Commerce. They have been amazing. They have been very supportive. It's a uh, hefty fee, but it's worth because they do, because mayors come and go and they mess up, mess up sometimes. But business owners, they're always going to be in the, stuck in the city. And if they don't 
get together and, and help build each other, our business is not going to be sustainable. You know, it's not going to be around too long. Our mission primarily is to build communities within communities and help each other. That's why we have the networking groups that we have. Um, also, when we have any problem as far as uh, obtaining any license, they have been pretty helpful. There were three that died and needed to be cut in front of our space. All we needed was one phone call. It was pretty impressive. They were right there the same day, actually. And I, uh, we only have good things to talk about uh, as far as uh, licensing. It is what it is. Every license has a, a price to it, but being in this field, which is, you know, health or food service, mm -hmm. there is a lot of hidden fees that the public doesn't have any idea. <laughs> yeah, so I can only say good things about it. Uh, no, I'm not a part of any of anything. I'm not a part of it for the moment. I was part of the Colombian American Association last year and they do a lot of like woman events, but it was just really hard for me to like balance out the working and then the website and then they kind of wanted me to like help out with the social media. So I kind of told myself that until I had some free time, I wouldn't volunteer myself because I actually do love doing all those things like events and like pop-ups and all that stuff, but it's just a lot of of the time consuming. Um, since I have an e-commerce website, it's a little different when it comes to like um, mayors and stuff like that. You know, no one's really gonna reach out because you know you have a website. Uh, <laughs> but um, I live um, in Rhode Island in Central Falls um, and there is a lady that's running for mayor. She seems really nice, um, maybe in the future. Um, and I do have a friend that's running for city councilor and I'm actually like helping her out with her branding. I'm like, do purple, do, because that's creator, do this, do that. So it's like, I'm kind of like behind the scenes. Um, and that's kind of where now because of the business, but I would love to in the future. Anyone has any more questions or comments? Well, we want to welcome, a, we want to thank everyone for being part of this conversation. We hope it's not the last one and we are very proud of your successes and every time you shine, we shine. And I do encourage you to, as, as you get older and you have more free time to reach out and mentor other people, that's very important because you never know who's gonna listen to you. And it might not be a Latina, it might be another woman, or it might be a man that will get inspired and say, you know what, that's a different path that I thought I, I could do that as well. I could be an entrepreneur and I could have a fulfilling job. Um, so if you guys want to hang out for a little bit and talk to them and network, please do so. We have some refreshments courtesy of the Women's Center. Feel free to um, enjoy a little bit of the food. And Eva, you have. Um, thank you. I think this was really valuable for sharing your stories. I also wanted to say I'm going to pass out a survey because I think that this is a very quality event and sometimes we don't capture that. Just so if you could give some feedback and say, you know, what your thoughts on this experience and we hope to partnership more and have more experiences that your voices are heard. Thank you. So I'll get that. Thank you, everyone.